What's up, everybody? This is Jack from Crypto 49er, bringing you my knowledge in cryptocurrency. Today, I want to talk about the Gecko Trading Bot and how you can improve your trading by setting up a blotter. So, the first question you might ask is, what is a blotter? A blotter is a record of trades and details of the trade made over a period of time, usually one trading day. The details of a trade will include such things as time, price, order, order size, and a specification of whether it was a buy or sell order. The blotter is usually created through a trading software program that record records the trades made through a data feed. Why would you want to use a blotter? So let's go down here. I mean, the most important part is actually here, this particular paragraph. A blotter can be used with or in place of trading journals by traders who utilize it to improve their trading techniques and strategies. At the end of a trading day, traders will usually use the blotter to reveal how well they performed. The blotter can be sorted through the reveal areas he or she ha could have performed better in, such as timing with entries and or exits. So pretty much what a blotter is, it's just a record, right? So it's all, all you really are using it for is to look at your blotter and then compare it to the data you see on TradingView, just the historical data, and then see like, okay, so if I, add, if I entered it in here instead of here, I would have made X amount more money X amount more on this trade compared to if I uh, compared to what I did on the, on the day. So the same thing you can do this exact same thing with your Gecko Trading Bot because all your Gecko Trading Bot is doing is just an automated process, right? I would say this probably doesn't always work, but I do think that there is benefits to it just to see and just be more critical about the market and understand what your bot is doing in relation to how the market is performing. This is something that has been done for ages, at least manually by traders, and I don't see the reason why uh, you shouldn't do it with Gecko. So now the other question you might have is, I think I see something that my exchange ready offer. Why am I doing this? So let's say if you have if you use Coinbase Pro as exchange like I do, and then you go to your fills, you don't even have to go to, I know they even have like a section where you actually can export out a CSV and showing you all the trades you made and so on and so forth. Kind of nice and all, but look at this for example right here. The last few trades, these three trades are actually automated. And I mean these three entries, I'm gonna say, because if you look at it carefully, the first one right here is a buy at 351. Again, I'm just, just like testing basis. I've made a very, very small trades in here. But you see that I have one buy order, that's fine, no problem. But then the next two, it is a one order that I put in on Gecko, but then it got split into two. So this gets a little confusing already because I didn't make that second order at that size level, at that, at that position size. I made one position uh, size order, a sell order, and it's the same amount of buy order. So this gets you, you know, I mean, it's just like unnecessary noise. And I think that, you know, we already have too much information in our information age, like you say, to process. So why do we need even an extra line? I mean, think about it. It's just like a delay on you processing your trades. I mean, like to look through this kind of information when you don't need to. That's why I think that it's better to have Gecko to give you that information instead. If you set up a blotter with Gecko, this is what it's supposed to look like. So simply, this is like a CSV file. I open it in uh, Mac pages. If you have Excel at home, you're using Windows, you open on Excel, maybe even open on Google Docs. But point being, the blotter is just very simple, right? So those two trades I made with the bot should look something like this. This is like a date and a time, when the, when the trade executed, and the price it executed for, the amount, and the size. That's all the information. And I didn't need to have that second, the, the multiple lines where the trade got broken up into multiple price points because the, you know, because that was the buy and sell demand that was happening at that point in time. I didn't. I don't really need to know that. I just needed to know I executed a trade at 2.06 p.m. at the $3.52 price point and the amount and that's it. So that's all I needed to know. So it's a very quick way if you think about it, expand it out for a second here. Imagine you have like um, 20 trades over here. It's a much cleaner way to see the trades that have happened throughout the day and you're able to understand what your bot was doing rather than having to like go cross out, delete lines or whatever it is that you need to do with the blotter that you would get from the exchange, you can just see it at a glance and see you know how well you're performing, even right off the bat, pretty much. Because you're really, I, I can see right off the bat, I, I made a profit from this trade. 
just because I bought it at a lower price point than I sold it at. So that's right off the bat, I can see it. But by using the blotter, I guess you call it, from the exchange, you will get more confusion involved and there's no need. So that's why I think it is a helpful, it's a helpful tool. So how do you go about setting up a blotter like this? It's actually very simple. And if you guys have been playing with Gecko for a while, you've probably seen this website once or twice, geckowares.com. So Gecko Wears is um, made by this guy, um, the Game Cat. Uh, you could probably find him somewhere on, on GitHub as well. He has been making modifications so and so forth with Gecko before I even started. So you can see his post right here back in September 7th of last year, adding all Gecko backtest tick data, data and indicators to CSV. So his idea was to write all the tick data and indicated uh, information into a CSV file so you can better understand uh, and track how your indicator, um, how your strategy is um, performing based on the indicators that it sees, right? And then he actually showed you how to do that. Like he even gave you the code to do exactly that. So what I thought was, why not use this particular code, but in a way to gather instead of the tick data information, to gather all the trades that happens, the trades that are executed, the completed trades that Gecko does. So and that's basically what I did. Follow this pretty much the instruction that he has to a T, but instead of putting it in the strategy file, like he said here, all I did was I put it in the trader.js file, and that's basically it. I mean, I made some modifications, obviously, because in here he used ADX as the indicator that he wants to uh, keep track of. As a blotter, you don't want or need that information. So, But let me show you this code right here. So it's very straightforward. Let me go back in here into Visual Studio Code. Um, for first thing first, that you need to have uh, FS. FS is a way for you to save um, save files locally on your computer. So for you to write and save files locally on your computer. So what you have to do first is actually if you go to terminal, all you're doing here is just going to npm install FS in your Gecko directory. So that, that will install that package that you need to actually write and save data. Onto, uh, ex onto external files. It's very very straightforward, very easy to do. So you will add that into the trader.js file, and the next thing is you add a header set equals blank. So, and I'll explain why you need that in a bit. So we'll just add that variable here. Um, so now we can go all the way down to where the actual modification of the code is. So in here, uh, I'm actually inside the trade.order.onCompleted function. This function is gonna fire off when the trade is actually completed. At this point, it already has all the information that it needs, like the summary price, like the summary of uh, like the price, the fee percentage, if there was any fees involved uh, in the trade, um, the date that it was executed on, so on and so forth. First thing, actually, I, I didn't do, again, this is really uh, the GameCat's code. So he used something called GR read time. This is the time, the date and time, when in this case, when the trade occurred. So the next line is the header text. Header text is what the information you want to capture or you're capturing. So, and you want to, like all spreadsheets, you want to have the top row to indicate what each column stands for. So in this case, it's date, price, amount, and side. So, and then the out text is actually the, the actual uh, output of the date time, the price, the amount, the side, which is buy or sell. So, and then the header set, as I was mentioning from earlier, what this does is if the header set is blank, meaning there is no header row in the file that you're writing to. Then it's gonna write this uh, header row onto this file right here called blotter.csv. And the best thing is it doesn't save it in the trader folder, so it might be a little hard to access. It actually saves it in the root of Gecko. So if you go into Gecko right here, it saves it right over here, blotter.csv. It's very easy to access. So once it saves that information. But anyway, so all this does here, the header row is to make sure it saves uh, the header row if there was no information, if there was no previous file created um, called blotter.csv. So once it does that, it's going to change the header set equal 1 and from that point on it will not uh, go back into this if statement here because um, it now has something inside the header set. So after it does that, it would then actually append the information uh, into the blotter. So again, the buys and the um, the date and time, the price, the amount, and the buy or sell side. So all this information is sent into that file, and then 
the alt text again is going to be blanked out so that you make sure that it doesn't write the same information over and over again. It's going to blank it out, so on and so forth. So that's basically it. This is just a very simple way to uh, write your trade data into the into a blotter file for you to actually look back on and to see how effective your bot was trading and how you can improve your strategy in terms of uh, your trading process. There's a lot of things you can do with this. The next thing I, I want to do is uh, add like a profit and loss kind of thing. I mean, a lot of this information is technically available already. Like if you look through the console, that like some of this information is actually um, is actually in here, like the round trip kind of thing. They kind of show you a profit loss. So Gecko kind of does have this information. But again, it's because of the fact that it's in the console, it's not permanent, it's shown with all these, again, a bunch of noise, right? If you're just looking for the profit and loss, you should have just a file called profit and loss. If you just want to look for the trade, you should just have a, a file called blotter. So then you can easily look at the information that you need. Instead of having to scroll through this console file and be confused and find out, I don't know what's going on, or, or trying to like, you know, determine what is happening in here. So it's a lot easier and cleaner way for you to see this information. So that's pretty much it, guys. I uh, just want to go back in here and uh, point out a couple of things. Okay, uh, so first of all, again, if you guys want to play with this um, blotter, you can uh, download my uh, modified version of the trader.js file. And uh, you might want to make some modifications in terms of maybe add, changing the name of the blotter, perhaps including the coin that you're trading on. So that might help you a little bit more. So there's minor things you could do with it. So, but definitely it's on GitHub if you want to play with it. So next thing is, if you guys are not following me on Twitter, definitely follow me on Twitter, Crypto49er, because I'm kind of proud of this. And I have to say, it's just uh, yesterday, Coindesk Markets, it's basically, people might use this as like a signal too, in a sense. Like if you're not a very good trader at this point, and you're still like doing some sort of day trading or um, swing trading on the side while you work on your Gecko bot, you might use something like Coindesk Markets to like, you know, give you uh, trading signals perhaps. So, and then they were, and yesterday they tweeted out this tweet right here. They said that um, Bitcoin USD uh, just printed a four hour Dragonfly Doji, which is hinting at a short, short term reversal. And then I said that I will only believe this if the next candle closes in the support area, which is uh, greater than $3,640. So, and then turns out I was absolutely right because, I mean, at that point in time, they were expecting a, uh, a reversal and perhaps uh, Bitcoin would shoot back up to like 3,700 or maybe even higher. That was the expectation, right? So, but I looked at it and right off the bat, I'm like, um, okay, this candle's already here. The next candle's already formed after the Dragonfly candle. So we already retested this support area multiple times first of all. So this is the first time we retested, it, we bounced back off. Second time we retested and bounced back off. And then the third time we retested and bounced back off right here. And then the fourth time, you see it, we actually broke support. So, I mean, when they said that we, you know, they were, this was a reversal candle right here with this long tail, with long shadow showing a dragonfly doji. They, they said it, I'm like looking at it, this is, a breakdown in support level. This is not a reversal. So I don't know what they're talking about, you know? So right off the bat, I tweeted them back and told them, it's just like, it has to be, this next candle has to close in back in support in order for this to even apply. And I mean, they agree with me. So <laughs> I was surprised they tweeted back and said they, they agree with me on it. So which is kind of cool. But at the same time, I'm just like, all Coindesk Markets uh, is doing is just providing information, reading, uh, one piece of information in this case just the candle information and not necessarily applying um, all these other information that you could apply to it like again the the retest of the support area multiple times the breakdown of the support level so there were so many things that happened but they didn't you know they didn't give you the information so the bottom line was right now with like at what um, uh, last I checked was like 3300 3200 close to getting to $3,200. And I'm to say, it's like, you know, it's very easy to point out that they, you know, that they were not right. But at the same time, it really shows that you need more than one piece of information to make a judgment call uh, in terms of the market wise. So definitely follow me on Twitter, again, Crypto49er, if you guys are interested in my point of view of the markets. And I also got into an interesting discussion with other people regarding um, Bitcoin and and altcoins overall. So, I mean, 
So definitely follow me on Twitter. Uh, again, the next thing is Patreon. So truly, really appreciate you guys supporting me on Patreon if you guys can. Up tiers going from as low as $2 a month, giving you access to my posts on my personal trading, swing trading strategy. Something that has worked for me. Again, it doesn't work for everybody every time, but it is a way for you to use a particular set of um, information, right? It's indicators. To, and I, I have to say it is a multiple indicators, not just one indicator. So, you know, to determine when um, to get into the market. Again, I, this is not trading advice, but it's just something that I use and something that, you know, um, as a supporter of my channel, you would get, you get posts like that. I would post at least once a month. And I think the information is definitely valuable. And in addition, there's other support levels too, like the second level, access to my private Telegram channel. There's a lot of different information you get as well from that at that level. So definitely check this out, patreon.com slash crypto49er. And finally, again, uh, at the teacher on sale, so check it out. Um, as always, it has my tagline, whatever you want to call it, at the end, at the back. If it isn't crypto, it isn't worth mining, it isn't worth speculating. Peace out, guys.